Hello, hello, this is Brendan, and we are doing my illustration and tech show, T-E-C-H. I'm going to be adding some tech stuff into the illustration mix. That's actually what I have mostly done for a living over the uh, past many, many years, mixed in with uh, design and illustration. So some people are like, oh, Brendan, he's the designer. I know him. And then other people are like, oh, you mean the programmer, the, uh, you know, the website? A maker. Well, most people go by designer. I don't know why. I have nothing to do with that. But anyway, I just want to make that announcement. So I'm going to be mixing like programming and stuff, and I have some of that in here. But in this video, which I don't know, I was thinking about doing like some hour long special because it's been so long since uh, I'm, just, I'm trying to open a file here. <clears throat> oh, yeah, this, uh, this one. There's a bunch of programming code, just so you can get a feeling of uh, some of the stuff I'm getting into. Yeah, but it's been so long since I made a video, um, and uh, I, I wanted to do this thing where like I'm on camera on screen too at the same time, but I don't know. I have a broken headphone. Uh, I, I'm just I'm lucky to have a moment to <laughs> sit down here and uh, yeah. When I did I say headphone? Is that yeah? It is headphone. The uh, the headset as they call it, with a microphone on it, is uh, broken, and I'm just, I don't know, I'm not ready to be on camera. But I was going to do this big, long thing. Um, what I'll do instead is I'm just going to flip through some of the work I've done recently. I've done tons of stuff. I haven't, haven't had time to upload anything uh, to like do a, just a lot of work. I was scrounging, and I had to find uh, new clients for new projects, and uh, there's a baby uh, to be taken care of here. So, um, But uh, this is a book cover. So I'm just going to go through some of this stuff right now. There's a bunch of illustrations I've worked on and stuff that you haven't seen, including a game. <clears throat> so bear with me. But we got some good stuff. So There's a book cover. The person I made it for kind of disappeared. Um, I got paid. I guess that's good enough. Uh, but we put an enormous amount of detail into it. And it pushed me a lot because whenever you're working for someone and they're paying you, and they keep saying things, you know, like, could you do this? Could you do that? <clears throat> and um, a lot of times people who have you to do art for them, they don't really know what they want. Um, or they do know what they want, excuse me. They know exactly what they want, but they don't know how to say it. And so they'll have a vision in their mind and they'll give you some uh, sample images. Um, so we had some of that, you know, we had some reference for this, but I'm not going to turn that on right now. I feel like it's kind of personal. Um, but I did want to show uh, the amazing amount of detail I put into this over a week. If you go in, and it makes a huge difference, you know, that detail. It's one thing I keep learning over and over again is don't underestimate the human eye's ability to see things that are there. Even if, if it is zoom out, and let's say you're watching this on the phone, and you zoom out, and you say, ah, nobody would ever see that texture on, you know, you know the fabric of her, of her, um, her, her, well, I don't know what you call that, a trench coat, you know, her jacket. Um, nobody will ever see that. We zoom out anyway, but they do. It's just there, you know, and your eyes, your eyes are seeing more than your mind can process. And your eyes, uh, I'm going to get deep here. It's like Jordan Peterson level. Your eyes are directly connected to your nervous system in ways that we don't necessarily understand. So says Jordan Peterson. If you see a snake, your body jumps before your mind knows it's a snake because your eyes are directly connected into the, the whole nervous system. <clears throat> so don't think that you can outsmart the human eye and uh, just be lazy and say, oh, we don't need that detail. No, you need the detail. It's noticeable. And this is one of the reasons, like, you know, it helps a lot to have some formal training in, in, uh, in art and stuff. Have somebody guide you and push you and... Uh, you know, to, to reach that next level. So let's have a look over here. And this is what we started with, right? It was like one of the first sketches that I submitted. Now, most people would say, well, that's deplorable. Why would you even show that to anybody? And they're not wrong about that. Um, however, um, I need to show something to somebody up front before I have to redraw the whole thing. Because this, I don't care how good you are, even though this is, I mean, there's tons of people out there who draw way better than I do and this is like um, you know 
just the amount of detail and, and stuff. And I put a, a ton of thought into it. And you can, I hope you can tell when you look at it. So that's the whole point <clears throat> is you got that. It started from this. And you notice, uh, you know, I zoomed in. I changed things a lot. <clears throat> the hair, the structure of her face. Uh, going to look at her face. Tons and tons of layers. Uh, I put a lot of thought into, you know, eye color and the hair and stuff. Now when I get this close to the hair, you can start to tell it's not hair. But that, I think that, especially up here, it looks kind of fake. But I think that much is forgivable. At least I tried to put in, you know, I used a good brush. And it was one of these brushes that, that, that comes with default gimp. It's, uh, it's called bristles, I think. Yeah, bristles or something like that. And you just take that one and scratch it around and it makes hair. Okay. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so that's that. Next thing I was going to show you is this one here. It's called God's Building. It, a, it came from my imagination when I was playing a game. Where, where like, uh, what was the name of the game? I forget. Um, uh, Prince of Persia. And they're running around Prince of Persia collecting these little shiny things, whatever you do. And you just look around at this amazing atmosphere that the artist created. You're like in these flying castles. It's kind of steampunk. It's very steampunk, actually. Um, a lot of people don't realize how much steampunk has influenced art and design. It's all over the place. But they don't call it, like Prince of Persia, I don't think they would ever call themselves a steampunk game, but it is uh, for many reasons. It has a lot of steampunk elements to it. So anyway, <clears throat> um, it's not totally, but anyway. Yeah, I just make a point. So I, I was just thinking, who can make these giant castles up in the sky? Humans couldn't do that. People can do that floating and, and like, you know, these giant, giant bricks and stuff. And it sparked my imagination to think of like some giant, uh, some titans or gods or something in ancient, you know, somewhere in time and space. And they build these giant structures and uh, they have some kind of magic or technology power where they can just move things around like this. And so it's God's Building is the name of this. Um, try and zoom in a little bit. You go into uh, sort of full screen mode. If you're in GIMP and you hit the tab key at any time, it'll hide those panels um, usually, depending on what you know your view mode is. If you're in single single window view like I am all the time, then you hit tab and it does that. <coughs> Unless you you know set your tab key to something else. But that's that. I haven't uploaded this. I did upload uh, this one. Also, I wanted to show once again. How you can start off bare bones. And this is a very nice uh, drawing. I took my time, made sure all the lines were straight, and flipped it around a lot. I used a path tool to get perfect lines here and there with the curve. And uh, and that was that. And then I spent a lot of time coloring. It's exhausting, all this work that I do. Um, and I'm not getting any money for that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, I should start promoting my Patreon channel or something. Or go to my website and hit a button. BSCHU.net. That's nah, okay. I don't care. Um, <clears throat> but if you do, it's appreciated. Uh, eventually, I have to get some, some something out of this. I do get clients because they see my work, but uh, I don't know. Um, what's the other thing? Oh, yeah, here. So then there's a game. Um, so I did those things, and I got just, I needed a break from illustration. Like I said, too much going on. But I got these guys. This game I had sitting on this shelf for so many years. I worked on it for a couple years, then I stopped for like three years. I kept thinking about it, but I couldn't get it running on Windows. I started it on uh, Linux. So it was on Linux operating system, as you can see here. You know, look at the top bar. It's uh, Ubuntu, I guess, is what I was on at the time. And uh, you can see the Windows don't look like Windows Windows. It's Linux Windows. The GNOME operating or GNOME uh, desktop. <coughs> And all these, you know, just the you can tell the environment is different from what you used to. And so the game looked like this at first. Uh, I did make some very primitive drawings of, to represent different land types for each grid. The name of the game is Grid Max. I'll show it to you in a minute. This video is getting longer than I thought, but oh well. Anyway, so it started off looking like this. And as you can see, like the menu is very primitive. I was just slapping up some text there just to see if things worked. And as time went on, they did. It worked. And so I kept on improving it. You see in this version here, I have icons in, in the menu. But they're very, you know, I knew at the time when I made them, that's not going to work. But, you know, I just left that there temporarily. It was a temporary fix. 
and you can probably, you know, you can see, I don't know if you can see the character here, and he's also very basic. Um, so, and then here I made the tiles more like, I don't know what I was going for, but it didn't work. And so I was hung up on that for a long time too. And finally, um, this is many years later where I'm much more comfortable with a drawing tablet and all this stuff, and I come back and boom, I make this. Now this is too dark, but um, if we zoom in, and you can see as far as the panel goes, I'll uh, leave it up to you to be your own judge of things, but I like this a lot. I was happy with the way it came out, and I said, that's how I want my game to look. It has a mixture you know, based on the theme of the game also, which is important, as a mixture of this uh, wood and a metallic and um, uh, what would you call it, foliage. And that's exactly, uh, you know, something, as you can see right there, the word foliage. <coughs> there is a mixture of uh, these objects in the game, which he later used for various reasons. Okay, and so, um, and all the panels are designed just like that. And so I did all that. And then I pushed it even further, and uh, basically I can show you the game now. So I go over here, hit run. Here is the game. So you see I have the lightning effect on the main screen here. And uh, just the name, you have uh, four buttons. One of them is disabled, just to continue the game, a new game, or quit, basically. And options is disabled. So just go ahead and uh, you know, do a new game. Right, and you can see in here get some messages and here it is so now I'm I'm happy I'm actually quite happy with how this looks it's not for everyone and it's not complete but you can see the background has the like the the ground the terrain has this sort of uh, it has a pastel kind of feel it kind of reminds me of a children's book in many ways and that I like that I think it's cool it's really interesting and over here in the water I made it sort of animated so it looks like it's moving all the time and again, all of this could be updated. But I like the way that it's st it's starting to fall into place of what I want. I'm going for an iconic kind of feel. I wanted to I want each tile to feel like a little card that you could pick up. Um like those old uh, matchem kind of cards where you, you throw all the cards down upside down and you pick two at a time and if they don't match then you have to try again. And so you know, a memory matching game. I don't remember exactly what they call it. But um, that kind of feeling of there's just that matte finish card kind of feeling. So everything is iconic and it, and it feels like, you know, you're playing with little tiles. That's what I would hope for, uh, for various reasons. Uh, I can't really, you know, articulate. But that um, <clears throat> that came around well and I like the way the, um, the menus came out. And I have options here and the game works. I can like pick up things, right? I'll start like moving things around and I can, you know, build things. Uh, I'm probably gonna die because <laughs> <laughs> you have to you have to eat while you're playing the game. So I can make things, the wood floor I'll make, and then I'll build. I'll zoom in a little, you move around. And you'll see a little lightning coming down and stuff. Uh, so I build, yeah, right. So there I'm making a wood floor, as you can see. Um, yep, I'm just about to die. <clears throat> so there's all kinds of stuff you can do in that game, and uh, that took a lot of work. And back here. So there's just, um, yeah, that, I mean, that's that for this. There's just a lot of work to get this done. This is very close to being done. I doubt you can see this from your current screen, but um, my website is, for, for this tech-related stuff, dream-gears.com, dreamgears with a hyphen in the middle, dot com. Um, if you go to that website, then this will be, I'll, I'll be launching this product on that uh, website sometime soon I have to finish uh, I finished almost everything I want to do uh, for the first launch except for uh, I need to create some battle scenes where you know you can do something like fight someone there's a lot of other stuff but you know every game should have something to spice it up a little so I figured I have some fight scenes um, and that's that yeah that's everything that I have here the only other thing I could bring up was uh, if, if this is the right let me get back over here hide some names the panel well, that didn't help at all um, I just want to show this panel yeah so here's a close-up where I this is all done in GIMP I made this panel and that's the one that you see when you're playing the game so I run it again it's quite quick it's a very fast game 
And there we go. So you see that panel on the top left over here. That, that came from this illustration. It's a PNG image I made in GIMP. And then I, you know, I placed it in there, made sure it was uh, sized to fit in the screen. And then I, um, you know, I went ahead and, and all the other stuff. You can see on the bottom, see, watch when I move around. You can see in this area over here, it currently says foliage. But if it, when I move the character around, right, so it has a display and it's telling you. And up here you see the numbers changing. So that's all done digitally. That's done with the, the programming language. It's C++ and uh, SDL for those of you who are into that kind of stuff. But um, the image behind it, since it, there's no way that you could, you know, can type code into a computer to make something that detailed uh, such as this, right? And I mean, how would you do that anyway? <laughs> it's like, you just have to draw it. So I did that and then you insert the images as a background basically and start uh, using the uh, the code to, to make stuff over top of that. And that's how that works. Okay, so that's it for today uh, in review. We had the couple of illustrations I've been working on. It's a long video, but it's been a long time since I've done anything, so I hope you enjoyed that. Um, help me get a new microphone. Go to my uh, website and donate. Which one? I want to know what's up here now. Um, I, I, don't, I didn't want to show. Let me show. Can I open a new window with Mozilla Firefox? Yeah, open a new window. What will come up? Is it blank? Good. Yeah. So you go to www.dream-gears.com. You know what's even easier? This is my new site. And so if you go here and hit the menu and go to games, this is where I'm going to be launching a, a couple of games. I have another one too I didn't even show you. I, I, when I say I've been busy, <laughs> I mean I've been busy. And bshu, B-S-C-H-U dot net. If you go to that one, it's easier. If you want to help me get a new microphone, because <clears throat> I need one badly. Um, and where is it? Right here, payments. I hit that payments button, and you get this uh, PayPal link. Isn't that handy? And you give me $10 or something. Five, one, anything, 20. The microphone's quite pricey. It's a, a minimum $100 I need. So, uh, with all the bills and the babies and stuff, it's, I, I have it. I have it. I can get, you know, go out there, but it's just, it's tight. You know, it's not easy. Yeah. And that's why I make all this entertainment. I hope I can get something back out of it someday. And uh, thanks for your support. We'll see you soon. Um, actually, today I might be back on, I can draw that on Reddit doing some stuff. That's what I hope, I hope to do. I'm waiting for my energy to build up. Been a little under the weather recently, but I think I can do it. So I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Can't wait to see you again. Have a good day, night, evening, afternoon, whatever is happening. And that's it. Goodbye.